Determining rate of change and initial value. This is lesson 4.2b. This is a linear equation. It's written in the slope-intercept form of an equation. It's linear because it represents a straight line. Its graph is a line with slope m and y-intercept b. The m represents the slope. This b is where the line crosses the y-axis. It's the initial value b. It's the y-intercept b. A linear relationship has a constant rate of change. We can find the rate of change m and the initial value b for a linear situation with a table of values for x and y. So here's our problem. Dave earns money mowing lawns. He saves his money in a jar, adding it to the money he already has. Confirm the relationship is linear and give the constant rate of change and the initial value b. Now the initial value B is going to be the money he already has before he even starts mowing lawns, when he's mowed zero lawns. They're giving us a table, the number of lawns mowed, that's going to be our X value, and we can see 2, 4, 6, and 8, and the amount of money he's got saved is our Y value, and it's showing us 50, 90, 130, 170. We can use the slope formula to confirm the rate of change is constant. So by using the slope formula, not only will we be able to confirm that the rate of change is constant, but we'll be able to find the slope of the line. We use the table of values and the slope formula to find the rate of change. It gave us these values. What we do is, using the slope formula for the second y and first y values and second x and first x values, we use these as our ordered pairs, and this is going to be our second point, and this is going to be our first point. So we're going to do 170 minus 130, and 8 minus 6, which is going to be 40 for our rise and 2 for our run, which is a slope of 20. Then we do it for... 6 and 130 and 4 and 90. And we get 40 for our rise and 2 for our run and we get a 20 for our slope. And when we use 490 and 250, we get the same slope. We find the rate of change is constant. It's 20. Dave earns $20 for each lawn he mows. But what is the initial value B? So we know the relationship is linear because we found a constant rate of change, 20, for our slope. Now we need to find the initial value B. We find the initial value when the number of lawns mode is 0, when x is equal to 0. We work backwards from 8 to 0 for x, and we can see the pattern is subtracting 2. We subtract 2 and get 6, subtract 2 and get 4, subtract 2, and get 2. If we subtract another 2, we'll be at 0, where we want to be, where x is equal to 0. But now we need to do the side for y, for the y values. If we do 170 minus 30, we're going to be subtracting 40. And if we do the difference between 130 and 90, that was subtracting 40. And if we do the difference between 90 and 50, that's subtracting 40, which tells us the y value when x is 0 is going to be 10. Since the rate of change is constant, we'll see the pattern of the change. On this side, it's minus 2. On this side, it's minus 40. We see when Dave had mowed 0 lawns, he had $10. The initial value b is the y value when x is equal to 0. Dave already had $10 before mowing any lawns. We can use an equation in slope-intercept form to determine Dave's savings after mowing any number of lawns x. Here we have our equation in slope-intercept form. We know that the initial value b is 10. He already had $10 before he started mowing any lawns, so we're going to put a 10 here. If he mowed 10 lawns, We'll put a 10 for x. We know he's getting $20. That was our slope that we found before. We do 20 times 10 is 200. We add the initial 10 that he had. That's $210.
We just substitute the number of lawns mowed for x in the equation. If Dave mows 10 lawns, he'll have saved $210. Here it's telling us to find the slope and y-intercept of the line represented by the table. We look at our x values and our y values and we look for our pattern. To go from 4 to 3, we're going to need to subtract 1. We'll subtract 1 again. We'll subtract 1 again. The goal is to find x is equal to 0. If we keep subtracting 1, well then we'll just subtract 1 to get to 0. For our y values, to go from 27 to 21, we subtracted 6, and we did it again to get to 15, we did it again to get to 9. So when we're at 9, we're just going to subtract 6 again and know that the y value is 3 when x is 0. I like to write my table of values vertically because then I can see the ordered pairs. And then I can use the slope formula very easily. So this would be our second, and this would be our first ordered pair. And we can do 27 minus 21 over 4 minus 3. That's going to give us a 6 for our rise and a 1 for our run, which simplifies to a slope of 6. And we do it for the other numbers. We do 321 and 215, and we get a slope of 6. And when we do 215 and 1 and 9, we get a slope of 6. So we know the slope m is equal to 6. We found that. And the y-intercept of the line is the y-value when x is 0. We know the y-intercept is equal to 3. Now I want you to remember to be careful because sometimes we have an undefined slope. That's when the line is vertical on the coordinate plane. When we use our slope formula for two points and we find our rise and our run, we have zero for our run. So be careful. When the denominator or run is zero, the slope is undefined. We can't have a zero denominator. It's undefined. And I also want you to tuck this away in your memory when using a right triangle to count the rise over run for the slope of the line. It doesn't matter if the triangle is above or below the line. If we have a positive slope that's rising to the right, we could do our rise going above the line. We have a 4, and our run is our horizontal. That's 3 units. We could also do it below the line and do 4 over 3. So our slope is 4 thirds. And if we have a negative slope, we can do it above or below the line. Just remember, going up and down is the rise, and going across is the run. We have three-fourths for our slope. Okay, we're finished with part B. We're going to move on to the last part, derive the slope-intercept form of an equation. And remember, the y-intercept B is the y-value when x is equal to 0. I hope you have a great day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.